you're doing well and welcome to a new video of the series of how it is to be a student in Germany. If you don't know me yet, I'm Mariana, I'm 34 years old, I come from Brazil and I'm a full-time MBA student here at HHL in Leipzig, Germany. If you have or have not watched the last video, I talked about how was my process of choosing to come to Germany and deciding to apply for HHL. So after you already decided, this video is for you. We're gonna talk about the application process. And jumping right in, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the first thing you should do, very, very important, uh, is to check the application deadlines. HHL has a few different ones, when you know that, and that's why I say it's the first thing that you should do, you have two things that you need to pay attention for because the date will help you really plan uh, your t all your process accordingly on all the steps that we're gonna talk in a little bit. But not only, HHO also have some early birds. So depending on the date that you apply, you're gonna get some really good discounts. And if you wanna like rock on your financial planning for this, for this study time that you're gonna take, you should really take advantage of the early birds. So these two things will help you, will be the base of whole, the, all the planning that is coming right after for you. So uh, because this topic is so important, that's why I have some paper here in my hand. I'm not gonna hide it because <laughs> it's all my planning, all the, the topics that I want to talk to you today. So you're gonna see it here. So not, not very nice, but yeah, more important to, to tell you everything that I think is important. And then we get to the second point. Here, you need to check all your documents. If you go to the website from HHL in the page for application process for the full-time MBA, here I'm gonna focus more on that because that's my program, you're gonna see a list of documents that you need to apply. So first of all, of course, your personal documents. You have your CV, you have your motivation letter, and you have the photos that you need to send. First thing here that I want to uh, bring attention to is your motivation letter. I think that's so important that, of course, all your, your application folder should be very strong for you to be noticed and be chosen in the end. But your motivation letter, where you really show your purpose, is the time that you have to really show who you are. Before the interview, they're only gonna read your information. They're only gonna see who you are online, in text. So it's very, very important for you to show who you truly are. This is gonna make your application stand out and you have bigger chances of being invited to uh, interview afterwards. Coming to work experience and recommendation letter, they are very connected because, yeah, of course you can get like um, a document from your company stating that you worked there for so long because you need a minimum of three years of uh, work experience to apply. So you can do that. Um, the way I did it was I got two letters of motivation. You just need one, but I got two. And those two were already, uh, they were already stating there, my two bosses, they were already stating there that I worked in the company for three years. It was already enough to prove uh, that I had this meaningful work experience. Also very important, um, the proof of your academic records. So you're gonna show your last two experience maybe. For example, if you already have a master, you're gonna need to send the proof of your bachelor and then of your master's. So they can see that you really finish your studies and also for them to check uh, how many credits you already gained in your education history. Because that's also gonna, gonna um, help you know which type of program you're gonna choose the fast track or the advanced track. And I'm gonna talk more about this topic. I'm gonna to go more in depth into it about the fast and advanced track in the next video that I'm gonna talk about the structure of the program. So just keep patient and keep an eye for the next video that you, I'm gonna talk more about it. And then you come to two exams that you need to do before coming to the MBA, but one of them, you have a different option. The first is your proof of English proficiency. So you have two ways of proving that. You need a, a IELTS a exam of over 7.0 or a TOEFL with 90 or plus. But one thing that you need to know is if you already had a study program in English, or if you can prove that you already worked in English for a, a long time, you can also use that to prove your proficiency in English. So yeah, if you have that, that's good for you because it's one less thing that you need to prepare for and that can take you a lot of time. So it's one last thing that, from your list, much, much easier. 
And the last thing, and I left this for the end, because in my personal experience, that was the thing that kept me awake the most, that stressed me out the most, but maybe for you it's not going to be such a big deal. That's the GMAT exam. The GMAT is an exam that you take to prove that you have the minimum requirements, academically speaking, to attend a higher education program. This is for all schools all around the world. They usually use GMAT or GRE. The most used one is GMAT, but you can get both. And each school is going to have a cutting line um, that you need to apply for the, for the school. Here at HHL, they ask for a minimum of 600. But of course, if your whole uh, folder of application, all your documents are very, very strong and you are in, inside the profile, if you are a little down, they also can um, take you into consideration. So that's what I said before. Be very strong, very candid, very open, show your true self. So also helps you here. For me, GMAT took me over a year to prepare. I had phases that I, I was able to keep very motivated in studying. I was taking three hours every weekday to study. And then on the weekends, I would go over 10 hours sometimes doing, um, doing some mock tests to test myself and then studying and doing some exercises by myself and also with some tutors, especially with math, going back to study math after so long uh, after school was a little bit of a challenge for me. But if you already deal with this on a daily basis, if you come from engineering background, economic, finance background, maybe it's going to be easier for you. For me, I really wanted to prepare for a long time and I really used that time for it. I tried the test twice and the second time I thought that the grade was enough and I applied already. I talked to HHL, applied and move on with my application. Another thing that's very important and that can help you on the finance side of things is to check the scholarships that HHL offers. So if you come here to the website from HHL, from the full-time MBA program page, you just go down a little bit, you're going to find financing on the menu. Then it's going to send you to the bottom of the page where you can find tuition fees, payment policy, but very important, scholarship and financing options. Here you can see some of the options. Uh, HHL Middle East, Africa, Asian, Latin American, Eastern Europe, in women in business, that's the scholarship that I got. Future Entrepreneur, Young Leader, HHL Dean's List. Here you can click in any one of them to get to know all the criteria and see which one of them applies the best to you. After you choose yours, you just fill the form and you have to send this form together with your whole application uh, folder that when you send your formal application to HHL. So also, if you have any questions, you can see here a few of the contact channels to HHL team. Then after you checked all of these documents, after you have everything in your hands, then the only thing you need to do is to apply. Uh, you can go online, you do everything online. HHL is gonna receive your uh, application or your documents. They're gonna check and they're gonna give you a first feedback. So after the first feedback, they're gonna invite you. If you pass, they're gonna invite you for a first interview. This interview can be with someone from, from the, the program, for example, a director of the program, or can also be with one of the professors. So you can already get to know someone that is gonna teach you in the program already in your interview. So as soon as you know, they're gonna tell you who the person is that is gonna interview you. They're gonna ask you for a few date options. You're gonna know who it is. Here, the strong tip is get to know who this person is. Go to the LinkedIn, look on the uh, HHL website, who is this professor or the director of the program, get to know them so you also prepare yourself for the questions and for the conversations you can have on this meeting. Because again, first they only saw all your documents. Now is the first time that they're really gonna talk to you in the first, uh, like a first person conversation. So they already know everything about you. So now is your time to truly shine, to tr show your personality. And if you know the person you're gonna talk to, you can also work that um, to your advantage. It just helps you with creating the initial rapport that is gonna make the, the, all the conversation afterwards flow much, much easier. And that's very important in any 
meeting any conversation that you have with anyone in your career as well. So that's something that you can use in your advantage. Don't miss that opportunity. After the interview comes what for me was very stressful, again, that is that you have to wait for an answer. Uh, they ask you for around three weeks time to go over everything. Your application is going to go over an admissions committee as well. Not only the, the person who interviewed you, but also some students are behind the decision. They're going to look at your whole admissions folder, going to look at the feedback that the, this person who interviewed you, then they're going to give you an answer. For me, I believe I had the answer pretty fast. It was maybe two weeks. I th don't think for me it took three weeks. So for me, it was amazing. It was a Friday night when I saw the email and I was so excited. I could really enjoy the weekend <laughs> and tell some people. I didn't tell everyone in my life about it, but I already could tell my mom and tell everyone that was rooting for me for, the, for the, this yes to come. And I got the answer in these three weeks after. And when they send you the email with the answer, uh, they're already going to send you an offer. And you need, you're also going to have some time to answer back saying if you accept it or not. You're already going to see if you got uh, any scholarships as well. Everything is going to come on this um, document that they're going to send you. So for the application, that's it. You got your yes. You're very happy. You accept the offer. And now is the time for you to prepare to come to Germany. And here... It's going to be very different depending on the country that you come from. For example, first thing would, would be, do you have a passport already? And second, does your country need a visa to come to Germany? Because usually the residence permit as a student, you're going to get it once you are here in Germany. But to enter the country, do you need a visa? For example, I come from Brazil. We don't need a visa to come to Germany. So I just needed a valid passport and I could come already here showing the, the, the letter that HHL sent, saying that I am enrolled in the program. But if, you're, uh, if Germany requires a visa for uh, citizens of your country to come, this letter that HHL sent you, saying that you are enrolled, will be very important. Then you're not going to need your passport and your letter of enrollment to take to the, the department at your country, and then um, they will use these documents to provide the visa that you need to come here. Before jumping to the last two topics of the video, let's hear some tips from some other students from HHL. Hello everyone, I am Vatsarap. I'm from uh, MSc 23 batch full time. The only thing that I can tell about application tips is that whenever you are applying, just don't uh, focus on the numbers and grades. Also focus on your, uh, on your experiences because HHL is school of leadership and entrepreneurship so make sure you you put your that side of your profile out too and for the interview I would say just be yourself and uh, talk about your experiences talk about yourself your passion and what makes you want to come to HHL and I'm sure you'll do great Oh, hey, this is Fiona Devi from India. I'm currently enrolled in H at HHL in MSc 23. And one advice which I would like to give to students who are applying to HHL is regarding the motivation letter or cover letter that you have to be candid in it. Don't just vaguely make things up, but be honest and show your true self in it. And it will really, even if you don't have a lot of achievements, if you just connect with the people, if you try to be just uh, candid there, it, it will work. It will work for you. That's all. Hey everyone, this is Akash from HHL MBA 23 program. All those of you who would be applying this year, I have a piece of advice for you. So the statement of purpose is one of the most important steps of the application. And I would suggest to be give an honest reflection of your life and all your achievements in the, the statement of purpose. And also make sure that the story which is being told there is reflected throughout each and every step of your application, be it your CV or your letter of recommendation. Two last points that I would like to, to state here that are very important uh, are your health insurance and your blocked account. Those two things you need to do before you leave your country because are things that you already need to get here having those things and you have a few providers in Germany that you can use. Um, so the blocked account, it is that. 
if you are outside of uh, the European Union, you need to prove to the authorities here that you can provide for yourself for one year. So um, they will ask you for one blocked account with the amount that you need for a year. Right now, I think it's a little over 10,000 euros for a year. So you're gonna put this money there and every month they will reimburse you one twelfth of the amount that you have there. So the whole money is gonna be divided by 12 and every month you get a part of it to pay for your rent, to pay for everything. So you're gonna get uh, your local bank account and they will just send this money to this bank account. So that's something that you need to, to think about before coming as well. And the another point is your health insurance. A health insurance in Germany is mandatory. For students, you, if you are under 30, you're gonna get a public health insurance. And if you are over 30, you get a private health insurance. And so they also differ in, in prices, depending on your age, of course, and depending also on the provider. So you also get some several options here. And if you have any questions about that, it's interesting to contact the program management at HHL. And also you can Google it, you find a lot of options about that. So now, if you went through the whole process and you're already here in Germany, it's gonna be the time to start having fun. Uh, also to start your program, start making friends and start finally leaving this amazing experience that you have been preparing for so long. So that's it for the video today. In the next video, I'm gonna tell you everything about the program structure, about the professors that we have, the classes that we attend, the projects that we are involved in, the clubs also that you can take part in during your studies here in Germany. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you how it is to be, uh, really be a student here at HHL. And I hope you are excited for that as well. And I see you next time. Bye-bye.